Hello, Red here, bringing you part two of the reconquista of the Byzantine Empire. Which now we've kind of been this small chunk of land here, Antolia. We now actually kind of expanded here, uh, took back Constantinople, and took part of Greece as well. But the uh, enemy forces of Bulgaria and Latin Empire still remain, as well as Rum, but can't really do much about them, especially since they're the wrong religion and the wrong culture. Which is fairly unfortunate. The plan is, though, to pretty much declare war on the Latin Empire since we do, I think we have claims on you, don't we? I wish I could declare war. Okay, declare war. But I'll break the truce. In 10 years, we'll declare war on you. And then we'll press all claims again. Well, I'll just do the claim, I suppose. And then just take uh, this last province at the time. The Land Empire also has a Dijon Drift, owning, I think this is Flanders, yeah. So the Land Empire will still exist, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean, uh, the, I mean, they're going to be pretty weak. They're going to get annexed by France, the Holy Roman Empire, eventually. And that'll be fine with me, as long as I hold Greece. But um, if, you, if I do extend past this, I mean, when I do... I know a question I'll probably be asked is what to do after now well, after the world conquest and I'll mention it sooner rather than later but it involves a lot of different things with religion uh, for, uh, claims on different kingdoms and empires and then expansion afterward and I'll let you on it after Greece has been all uh, claimed up and retaken. Next up is Bulgaria though, and they have a very weak amount of troops, and we have a lot, a bit of money that we can use. And once we speed up time, we have the mighty triumph in the Hippodrome. Where the soldiers will now cheer on that we've won. Huzzah. And we are slightly threatening, but I don't think it'll be that much of a problem. We have disease slightly in our country. Uh, I think that also means we need to just go reorganize a few of our advisors. And you need to go probably just train troops in the capital as well. Of course, is our correct... Actually, no, it's Catholic. I oh, hope that is just great. Oh, he changed the content so back to the correct religion. And it looks like Bulgaria is going to war against the Mongol invasion. Excuse me. But that was the one thing I was least expecting. And we have a... How powerful are you? We have a vassal who claims to be the ruler of the Byzantine Empire. Okay. I mean, good luck with that. I have more money than you, therefore I win. You only have about 12,000 men. I wish you the best of luck. For now, though, we have... Um... Oh. Oh. Constantinople is back to being orthodox. That didn't take very long. Well, we have all the pretenders trying to go and make the worst mistake of their lives here. But since obviously we have a much larger army, we win. Uh, my daughter has rashes and high fever. So we go recruit another court physician. And if a guy is level 13, you know what? Just recruit the pilgrim. I have a water fight. Okay, just see down Athens then. I mean, this is what you get for betting against me. A noble by the name of Yang Hua came to the court seeking asylum. He escaped from China, the rest of the family has been executed, or the emperor. 
A great big city of submersible nature is known across the land. I mean, I'm not. Uh, I employ to grab me refuge. And how good are you? But average. Honestly, yeah, you can stay. China is so far away, they can't really reach me. Honestly, they're mad if they do. Oh, here comes the Emperor. Come to attention that someone was harboring the enemy. Uh, I can use Grace. But I have zero already, so it won't be a negative. Oh no. What will happen to all my Grace? Um, oh. Do have disease in my capital? The army will siege down the rest of Athens, and finally, once uh, this army is taken care of, we should win the civil war. Despite Huanua's fears, no emissaries from the Chinese emperor came looking for him. The time has come for me to leave. I'll never forget your kindness. Please take this as my, as my take, take, take this as a token of my gratitude. I have a dragon amulet, and you vanish without trace. So that's actually really cool. A quality four dragon amulet. Cool. It's called dragon necklace. Um, my courtier suffering from a current epidemic. I can just throw him out. Why do I care about all these courtiers? Honestly, it's lowborn. So I probably should spend my pretty points. Uh, I invited my brother for family time. I mean, there's a disease going on. And I'm glad we're friends. We'll die of disease together. And my courtier, become friends with. And a courtier named Constas to be part of our family. Or become part of my court. Okay. And there goes that civil war. Since that has uh, changed. You absolutely hate me. Can I banish you? Can I execute you? You could ransom me, but I think I'll just leave you. Can I revoke a title, actually? Ooh. And you're only a single count. So now I own this. And since you don't really care. I'll give you money. Can I ransom you? I'll give you money twice. Um, we'll implement some rationing while we're stuck here. We'll ransom this guy. And then we'll give you the... Your own Duchy of Athens. And so we'll give you the... This province here. And you should love us. Yep. That's how I make one powerful duke. That's our friend. So the, the trick to doing that... Uh, if you already have someone in prison from rebellion, uh, and they don't have the amount of money, just give them the same. Give them the amount of money they need to be ransomed. Ransom them, so you get all your money back. Uh, they'll like you for getting a free gift, and they'll be out of prison, which gives you minus removes the negative thirty percent opinion penalty, and then give them any land that they deserve, and they'll love you. Um, there's a base being called Tentable that has a large number of rats. Uh. Disease is gone, actually. So we can really open the gates. We'll eat the rats. And then my friend... Well, let's try to eat food. But honestly, I don't care. We'll put some powerful people in our cabinet. Why not? 
And I think while Bulgaria is busy with, you know, an entire war against the Mongol Empire, I mean, congratulations on that. We'll go and retake all of our claims again. Because we have the money, we have the troop count, more or less, not really. Some people are upset because of raised levies, but I don't think it really matters. And we'll go press all claims. We'll just raise vassal levy troops and hire abandoned mercenaries to do the job for us. And we'll hire about... We'll hire the company to Rose. Get all the troops together and quickly siege on all this territory so that we don't have to worry about uh, Sicily aiding them in the war. Which I'm not... Uh, let's see right now. There's a trade post in Lesbos, trying to assemble a mob to even get some money out of it. And we get 100 gold because we raided Venice's uh, trade post. And with the Sicily, we'll go just eliminate them. The counts, uh, some stuff that I don't care about. Uh, we should probably get some commanders in charge, but we will focus on the attack. And we collected 200 gold, which actually offsets, nearly offsets what we paid for for mercenaries. And actually, they are sending a size of troops to try and retake the land. My courtier can become ambitious, but I don't care. Like many times before, I don't care about the courtiers. We'll try to get noble customs up so that feudal vassal opinion will rise. As well as probably getting church infrastructure up. My own one daughter's been discreet, she's hiding a pregnancy and we'll deal with it quietly. Uh, become trusting, why not? Don't really want to spend the money. And we're taking back our territory now. And we have a 3,000 men advantage, so I'm just going to go ahead and attack without me. <laughs> leading any army because I'm too much of a coward and looks like we're kind of losing so we'll just hire another 7,000 men to join in right that's not good yep we'll just raise 16,000 men instead and I leave this guy proselytizing it hunt the proselytes Oh, and we also have a peasant rebellion, peasant rebellion as well. Where? Oh, just down there. My daughter wants to become ambitious. Why not? Go do that. We'll finally smash the Bulgarian army. My courtier has not become ambitious. That's the dumbest thing in the world. And we equip some men here for the field. My that person is a brilliant strategist. Also need to give our daughters some more focuses, so you're all becoming diplomats and you're all gonna be married off to the Well, Mongol Empire. Because I just really don't want to be invaded by them. For very good reason. Anyway, Bulgaria should definitely surrender soon, like, now, actually. Thank you. We have all this beautiful land back. Uh, we're not going to have a, a triumph, because poor gun. And look at that. Uh, most part, we reclaimed part of the empire. And the Mongol Empire is slowly moving their way through, but I don't think they're doing that well. Despite the fact they have a certain amount of troops. So hopefully most of them will die just by attrition. That's my hope. Look at that, we are the sort of good, now, Byzantine Empire. In about four years, we'll go declare war on the Latin Empire, take back this land, and we'll finally become a whole empire again. 
get my call to you. Don't become ambitious. That's what I least want you to become. Um, my daughter's knave Pisa. It's not exciting. Uh, would you like to marry my daughter? Can I arrange a marriage? Too distant. More skilled tacticians. Bulgaria is having a revolt uh, against the tyranny, which means not going to actually get independence. So we are collecting more money, which I do like collecting money. So we can try changing, try this new mechanic out, the Jade Dragon. And we could pay tribute. They could have sent one of my uh, daughters to do nothing. Who hates me? Should do it just to gang ally somewhere north. I want to be trolled up with the Byzantine Empire. No. Oh, she's past childbearing age. You're really that old? Have I not married you off yet? 31 is past childbearing age. Blimey, okay. Well, let's go try out the uh, new mechanic here. Yeah, take my daughter. You're the 31, yes. Ah, 331 Grace. The heavenly Wang Yan Mijing Emperor is willing to the Empire. Grace you accept your gift. The wits of Iring has a good chance of being entertaining to us. Ah, oh, well, she'll be enlightened. <laughs> We can request a peace deal. Okay, well, we have some tribute. We send a gift. Ah, oh, that's a lot of money. That's a very large gift, but we have sold one of my daughters off to the Chinese. <laughs> we can welcome the Jews back. Let's welcome the Jews back. Yeah, sorry, I just needed your money for like, for like, how many years? 20, 23 years? Okay, well, we have a duke who hates us. Why do you hate us? The main too big, too many duchies. What duchies do I really hold that you hate that much? I have my duchy. Yeah, so we'll give it off. Are you happy now? If you hold Lesbos, I might give you... Well, first off. Can I just clear one you? Yeah, I'll take the Aegean Islands from you. That's, uh... Yep. We'll claim the Aegean Islands first off. The ally to Serbia, which I kind of don't care. Get all the vassals up to Constantinople. I inherited barony. Excuse me. My daughter becomes ambitious. Like all daughters, they should become ambitious so you can give them a way to wreak some havoc somewhere in the world. Anyway, we'll retrieve the Naxos Islands. It should be a fairly easy wall with no consequences whatsoever. My daughter is has the flu. Call the court physician to take care of her. I think she actually came better. Maybe? She now a underhanded rogue. It's pretty good. Uh, I'm also not kind. Which means I'm growing too old at 57. I'm gonna die soon, aren't I? Which means I need to clear war on the Latin Empire now before I lose my claims.
Luckily, I won't suffer from title succession. So we finally took this land here. We have the Duchy of the Green Islands. Just simply just give to you. And you can deal with all that. And our realm, the main size, is now actually low enough so that we can handle it. Anyway, Mr. Man, we want our land back. You want the Salonica? It's your claim. You know, I should have a thousand prestige to do it. And we'll raise up all vassal levies once more. Of course, these 800 men are going to die. I'll have a small ceremony because we all continue to keep going to war. But no care in the world. My son is a detached priest. Oh boy. You have zero diplomacy. Uh, I don't think I raised you right. <laughs> can I can I return my son? I need I need a new one. Uh, rivalry between my daughters now ended. That's good news. I need a new marshal. Let's put the gut. Some powerful leader in charge who's not really good at his job. Also need some commanders. Dentley. There we go. So we'll appoint some good leaders here. And send the other army to go and aid. I do love spawning commanders at the very last day. <laughs> Just to assist. And that should wrap up Greece, pretty much for the most part. Also, uh, Serbia is now one province minor. That is just sad. My nephew, Michu Gorev and Prosecutors, extort money. Let's do it later. I'm now stressed, which means I'm going to die very, very soon. That's always a sign of death. Anyway, this was about one. Look at that. Our beautiful land is now reunited under uh, this one guy. Who's ambitious. And I kind of want to murder him. Oh, he's my son. He's a detached priest's son who shouldn't really deserve this land anyway. Okay, son, if you're going to kill me, at least hold this land for me. So it won't do your drift. Like the worst plan ever. Oh, no, he loves me now. Uh, the, the sun, all you needed was one province, and that made you happy. I just need to pick an ambition. Family folk? No. See, they're prosper. I'll also just go hunting because my wife's dead. Uh, news from China. Subjugate a tributary state. Interesting. A lot of news from China. Oh, and also tell you that the Mongol Empire has actually expanded quite a bit. Can I... Can I arrange a... Can I arrange a marriage? Quickly. Ah! You shall marry my daughter. My, um... My bad daughter. Now we'll create a non-aggression pact with the Mongol Empire. Ah, my plans have succeeded beyond its wildest dreams. Now let's create an alliance. <laughs> no. Too busy conquering the world, you will next. 
Well, at least this gives us a non-aggression factor with the Mongol Empire, which we kind of need. Just marry into the other family. When in doubt, just parry your way to victory. Is that how it goes? It's how it goes. But hey, look, we're the Byzantine Empire and we don't suck. Okay, so I did mention that once I did conquer most, well, part of our good territory here, I would spill my secrets. So if you're ever playing Crusader Kings 2 and, and you want to conquer the world in some capacity, uh, there are several ways you can do it. Um, the way you're least going to do it is by, you know, fabricate a claim as your magistrate or your diplomat. But if you ever look at different uh, types of countries, there are two main ways to do it. Either through Holy War or through title claimants. And uh, the first one is simple enough. If you decide to ever change your religion to something else, or if you're a religion that, you know, is somewhat separated, like to say, if I decided to change Orthodox to change my religion for Orthodox to a heresy of Orthodox, that means I can declare holy war on literally everyone that's not my religion because you know they're the, they're the false religion. And that's a fairly easy one if you want to try and go for it. Uh, I might try it if it, if a different religion pops up, and I'll seize the opportunity immediately. But um. In order to do that, though, you need all your vassals to love you unconditionally because you're going to get a lot of uh, people rioting because of it. And if that happens, uh, make sure you have a big enough treasury to be able to flip all your vassals around because once you change your religion, you can be able to try to force convert all your vassals in the area. And once you do that, it should be fairly simple to simply just ask them to become your religion. And so from there, you declare holy walls and everyone around you. Make sure you're strong enough to take on anyone who decides to join against the person's side. So if you're fighting against a Catholic ruler, Hungary may get uh, you know, Poland or the Roman Empire to join on their side. So you want to make them quick walls. And so if you're fighting against the um, other Orthodox, Orthodox people might side with them as well. But they're probably going to be a lot weaker. So if you go after them, they'll make you a lot stronger to take on Catholic and then Sunni. And that's one way to do it. You can also do uh, Great Holy Wars, which takes large kingdom titles as well, instead of just uh, duchy titles, which is a lot faster. But I think it's only a one time only for a single character, or it's a limitation of like 20 years. And so if you want to go the other sneaky route, uh, it requires a bit more effort because, well, it's not as easy and it's a bit more luck of the draw. But if you ever select kingdom titles, and remember, this has to be a title that either is below you or it's something that you can inherit. I do recall in my other campaign of the Business Empire that I managed to inherit my way to the Holy Roman Empire and that essentially just made my game a lot easier. But if you ever have a kingdom title that you see and you want to see the luck of the draw, look at claimants. And if you find a guy here who has a strong claim on a type of t uh, empire or kingdom title, then you have absolutely every way and means to take the land from them. Of course, this requires you to invite them to your court. I mean, this is actually purely random, but you, um, I managed to get the title of Bulgaria under my thumb. Um, I don't have a, I don't have a truce with them too. But what you want to do is find a guy within that court that you can take. Then you want to give one of your uh, county titles to them. It can be any title you want, as long as it makes them a count to rule the land. And then you press the claim against Bulgaria or against the title that you take from them. So now because I have this one guy here within my realm, I can give him one of my pieces of land. So I'll give him, I don't know, something I don't really care enough. So I'll give him, what's a really weak province I don't care too much. 
I'll give him Thrag since it's right next to it. And this is very important that you make him a uh, leader or a... a uh, it's very important that you make him landed. Because if you don't make him landed and you press his claim, then that means that he will just simply take the throne and simply run away with it. But because he has a strong claim on the Kingdom of Bulgaria, that means I can go and claim... Let's see... The Kingdom of Bulgaria should be able to. Yeah, I claim all of Bulgaria with this claim. And then take all the land. And I'll show you really quick. Because Bulgaria I don't think is very strong. They still have the... Cumania. Cumania as their ally. But I don't think they're going to be that powerful enough to take us on. Because they also did lose their alliance with Sicily. So we'll just find the guy again. We'll go and give him a landed title. A Thrake. So now he's a landed... Uh, land, land account with another realm. And so what we're going to do is now claim Bulgaria. And this will automatically give me the Thai claim on the Thai kingdom. And because I'm an emperor, which is a tier higher than the kingdom as an empire, I'm able to declare the war, give him the Thai kingdom of Bulgaria. And if I was a king, and I gave him a king title, then I wouldn't be able to inherit the realm. Because this is a very important part, because you, you have to be a tier higher in order to take the entire land into within your realm. Unless you just really like the guy a lot. Which I mean, it's a lot, it's a lot asking for an entire wall to do it for. But once you get all your soldiers ready, and matched up to go for, go for the fight, We go attack, take the kingdom, and then we'll be able to win. You quickly siege all the land. It's not that important part. Uh, you want to make sure that you do take land that he directly owns. So it's only these provinces here, because that will mostly affect the wall. But once you go and attack him, get to 100%, that's it, this is going to be a very quick war because I have definitely more troops than him. They force my demands, and then, because I made a usurper my lander title, I now own all of Bulgaria. Isn't that exciting? Of course, there are a few downsides to this. Mainly being the guy I put in charge is the... Well, actually, he is orthodox. He's the incorrect uh, culture if you're trying to go for one culture title. But I do also want my land back. So I will scheme, make a, uh, my plot. This will be take back Thrake. Which I should be able to revoke it. And we do now have an iron class heresy that we can maybe try and take for us. And we can then flip to different religion. But if you ever curious about how to do world conquest and you want to find an easy, you know, kind of a cheeky way to do it, that's how you do it. But it's very iffy because you kind of have to go and get someone into your court, which is the biggest problem. So if you want to go after Hungary next, you have to find a claimant like him that has a strong claim on the entire kingdom title of Hungary. It doesn't really work if you have a weak title, unless they're a kid ruling the kingdom title. That's how I remember the rules. Yeah, so that's how you do it. So, World Conquest, that's the simplest way. And if you're looking for a way to take out another empire title, just simply try to marry your way within another person's dynasty. Like, simply because this guy, entire lineage is dead. I want to start marrying into this guy's family. So if I start, you know, arrange a marriage if I had an extra son, I could try and do that. But unfortunately I can't. Anyway, 
I do kind of want my land back. And while it's costly, I should be able to get uh, some people within my side. Or not. 100%. Can I revoke it? And there we go. And now I got my actual province back, which now I can keep. Though he kind of hates me for it, but it, I just gave him an actual kingdom title. I granted him an entire kingdom, so he's not going to be that upset. I can grant him uh, an extra title for an extra 10, which offers it by uh, 25%. 10, 10 out of 40. 25%. So yeah, that's how you uh, will kind of do world, uh, world conquest. But you kind of have to get really lucky because if uh, you have to find someone who does have a who has a strong claim on it, well, and if not, you have to get a woman or a child in charge. And it should usually do it. But now we have a uh, revolt. But I don't think that would, no, that would make us a different religion. So once the peasant revolt is taken care of, I think I'll call it apart from here. Because we kind of made ourselves a very strong Byzantine Empire now since we conquered Bulgaria, parts of Greece, we can now go after Rum, take, take out the uh, Rum Revolt, go after Northern Neighbours, and uh, simply just attack everyone else. And I think, with the, all of our money, I can search for a smith. And let's get ourselves some fine jewelry, because we only have a crown of thorns. I mean, it's, it's a fairly good crown. Jesus wore it. But I think I want something more sparkly. And since you have a bunch of money right now, not doing anything with it. I'm trying to make the best crown we can possible. Um, yeah, invite the famous goldsmith to my court. Give him 2,000 gold. The goldsmith has quietly accepted my invitation and arrived at my court with me a week later. She presented me with some sketches of her previous work and several letters of recommendation. I assume with her skill, and although I asked myself how much money I could spare for a set of crown jewels. And we'll just spend 2,000 right off the bat. I check her progress and I stole to a forge. I tend to find her working on the project. I'm still working on different tasks, especially my courtier Contentimus. Um, I'm not going to care, honestly. As long as she makes me a fine crown to wear, even though I am wearing a crown, technically. And we have a um, courtier who's good at martial. And I was overcome with excitement and curiosity when Philippa informed me of the crown jewels were completed. I'm waiting my throne with the carrying the great box across the room. I struggle not to leap up and meet them halfway when I finally touch a heavy lead, my hands are shaking. And with the low, low price of like 2,000 gold, we now have a crown of majesty, an emerald scepter, a sword of heroes, which gives us extra opinion and monthly prestige. And I think from there. Being, having a new crown, more prestige to take more land with. I think I'm going to call it part here. Oh, also, the Roman Empire also had a large revolt. <laughs> it's a bit hilarious. What is it for? All against the tyranny, which is a bit unfortunate. Which means there's not going to be any usurping or independence wars. But I think from here, we're going to call it part for the Byzantine Empire. So I will see you in the next part where the Byzantines uh, rise the Phoenix again. I'll see you then.